So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple released iPadOS 15 Beta 5 to both the public developers and overall developers a couple days ago and we've had it on the main iPad Pro, our main device over here, the M1 iPad Pro and I wanted to give you guys overall battery performance updates, give you guys performance updates in general, talk about any new features that we noticed over those last couple days that maybe slipped by on the original Beta 5 kind of update video and then lastly I'm going to see if I can give you guys my recommendation to install it because Honestly, the beta program this year has been very, very, very stable. But without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's hop right into this video, everybody. So just to show off exactly what we're about, so we're on software version 15.0, and then we have 19A5318F. So if you guys have been watching the previous videos, you know that we're getting closer to that RC edition like we mentioned before. And also we're trying out light mode because everybody's been telling me to get out of this dark mode and go to light mode, so I did light mode with a dark background. So one of the first things that we noticed is Apple actually added a lot more glyphs. So glyphs are kind of interesting. So a glyph, if you guys aren't aware of what a glyph is, is if you go into like one of these modes, these little icons are considered glyphs, right? They're not emojis, you know, I think the word glyph literally means like a utilization or like a utility icon or something like that. But if you go into shortcuts, Apple actually added an abundance of new glyphs for shortcuts. And the reason they added it is because you know, these are all different shortcuts that I've set up before in order to get like a custom home screen. So if I click on one of these or three dots, you can actually change the glyph type for the icon, right? So if I click on this top left right here, you can see that the automatic or the default glyph that's shown whenever you create like a home screen shortcut is actually just this one. And you can change the colors. You've been able to do that for a while. But if you go into the glyph section, you now have an abundance of new ones. So you have the Euro one, you have a pinpoint one, you can go through these, you have like an Apple Music one, so you can literally pick whatever you want. You have a QR code scan one, which is awesome. The camera one, you know, maybe a do not enter one, so like you don't want people to use that, which will probably make people actually click on that icon if somebody else is using your phone or iPad. But again, these are all glyphs that are brand new. I think Apple added like at least 100 new ones or something like that. Like these were definitely not around before. So that's the first visual thing that we noticed with Beta 5 iPad OS 15. And in the theme of the new glyphs, if you go back into the focus modes like I showed you, in long press, the actual work glyph is actually a little bit different. So if you guys can see right there, they just updated it a little bit. Let's make sure we can actually, there it is. So the work glyph is actually a little bit different. Just something that we noticed over here. And then the last thing we saw was actually inside of settings, inside of accessibility, and then you scroll down and then click on actual sound, and then click on audio and visual, and then you go into background sounds. Stop sounds when locked is a new setting that wasn't there. When enabled, background sounds will stop when the iPad is locked. So that by default is turned off. I'm gonna keep it also turned off because I like it when I shut down, when I shut off or even close down my iPad, then everything turns off. But now if you want to, let's say you're listening to music, but you wanna close it down, you now turn this on and you can still listen to music even though you have you know, a smart cover or a magic keyboard that's over there or something like that. So that's a cool little addition, a little customization feature that Apple added in the accessibility section. And then lastly, let's go over battery performance. So if we go into the settings, let's go into battery right here. Again, you can see that it wasn't used too much over the weekend just because there was a lot of other stuff going on. But if we go to the last 10 days on a long day, so again, whenever I recommend people look at their battery intake and how much battery they're using, go to your last 10 days and then click on specific days where you see that battery was actually used pretty much the entire day. So on a day like this, right, four hours and 16 minutes of screen on time, nine hours and nine minutes of screen off time, and you can see that applications like LumaFusion took up most of my battery. So one hour and 19 minutes of usage took up 34%. So honestly, I could probably edit maybe for four hours straight on this thing before it runs out of battery on me. So those are apps that are very task intensive and obviously they're gonna take up a lot of battery versus something else like let's say something like YouTube, an hour and six minutes took up 24%. So pretty much the same amount of usage time between LumaFusion and YouTube, but 10% less power used on YouTube just because of the fact that I'm only watching videos versus actually doing stuff on LumaFusion. So on another day, like last Tuesday, six hours and three minutes of screen on time. Again, a big part of that was Peacock, YouTube, so a lot of content consumption that day, which is why we probably got more time. So ideally, when iPadOS 15, the normal version comes out to the entire public, I'm gonna try to push it to that eight to 10 hours and see if we can actually get something like that. Because as of right now with the beta program, I have not seen it go past like six and a half hours of screen on time. But that's just my use case, and again, I push this thing a lot, so it's not like I'm only watching videos on this thing 24-7, because if I was, 
then I probably would get that 10 hour to 12 hour mark. But that's gonna do it for this view. Let's get out of here and go to the normal view. So that's pretty much gonna do for this video, everybody. Like you guys saw, we got very, very small tangible differences like updated glyphs, maybe some more additions to be able to use in shortcuts and things like that. And then on iOS, you also got a couple of updates like the alarm clock being able to use some haptic feedback in order to snooze it or to turn it off. So very, very little things. And again, we are on beta five, which means we're getting closer and closer to that RC edition which is that release Canada, which ideally is gonna come out like a month from today or a month from tomorrow, because that'll put us right in the middle of September, which, which is hopefully when Apple releases or at least announces iOS 15 and obviously the new iPhones as well. So if you guys aren't on the beta program and you want to, honestly, I do recommend it. it is now on both my main iPad and my main iPhone right here. And they've been working wonderfully. The only app that's had like a couple of issues is Twitter, but at the same time, it's just a matter of restarting it, quitting out of multitasking, and then going back into it and there's been zero data loss. So that's a big thing with these beta programs or these beta updates, I've had zero data loss situations, right? And that's the biggest thing. So if you put it on your main device and you start to freeze up or have to restart an application or something like that, and sometimes you do lose data, here with this beta program, we have not lost any data while working on anything, whether it's LumaFusion, whether it's a simple note, or whether it's me just typing out something on Twitter very quickly. But overall, the beta program has been great. It's been very, very stable. If you guys wanna jump on it and throw it on your main device, then by all means, go for it. I don't wanna be like super liable and everybody's situation's a little bit different in how the actual operating system installs to your personal device. But again, for me personally, it's been working great and I do recommend the iPad OS 15 beta, at least a public developer beta because it's free to join. But that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. Like I said, stay tuned and stay subscribed because we've been using Windows 365 on the M1 MacBook Air and I'm gonna release a couple videos about how Windows 365 runs on the MacBook Air and if you can use Windows on your M1 Mac as a actual computer and use it like if you actually would need Windows. Like if one day you need Windows and all you have is an M1 MacBook Air, the idea is to just be able to pull up Windows on this M1 MacBook Air, and honestly, it runs extremely smooth. So definitely stay subscribed, everybody. But like I said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, leave a comment below. Are you guys gonna update to the beta program? Are you guys gonna wait until September now that we're only like a month away at this point? I'm always curious to know. And if you have like a secondary device, is it on there as well? Let me know. But until next time, peace.